Hello, beer drinkers. I'm Bobby Covina. And I am Professor Bill. And... Hi, this is Jeff, Bullseye Bruco. And this is the... West Coast Beer Cast. So, you might notice there is a laptop with a small human right here. So Jeff is going to be um, joining us live via Google Hangout. Uh, I don't see the human. And if, I know, but if we're going to... We'll do it afterwards. Oh. He's there. He's right in front of us. Oh, yeah, okay. Anyway, it's going to be awesome. Um, yeah, so we could also have viewers live. So instead of saying going to, it would be is now. It's awesome. We're living in the future. Bobby K. All so right. anyway, we're doing SoCal beers. Last episode was the NorCal, and uh, those were awesome, but I think these are going to be even a better lineup. Up first, we have the Hangar 24 Orange Wheat. You see it everywhere pretty much now in SoCal. Do you guys see it in NorCal? Oh, uh, we do get a little bit of it up here. Not so much in the uh, Santa Rosa area, but definitely in the North Bay. After that, the Hangar 24 Columbus IPA. I have not tried that one. Have you tried it? I have not tried it. Have you tried it, Jeff? I haven't actually seen it at all. Well, you have now. Here it is. All right. Now, some we picked up from our visit to the Carl Strauss beer opening of the beer gardens that we got a press invite to. It's kind of cool. Yeah. Um, the Boardwalk Black Rye IPA. And, uh, that'll be tasty, I'm sure. After that, Ballast Point, the Sculpin. This is another IPA. So, yeah, Ballast Point, SoCal. Not so well known microbrewery down here, Stone. Yes, they're, wow. I yeah. mean, we had like too many to choose from, and we've done other stones on the uh, other episodes. So here's the Imperial Russian Stout, and you might introduce Right after that, the Stone Smoked Porter with vanilla beans. Such good beers. Yeah. Such good beers. Dude. Yeah, it's unreal. The Ale Smith Speedway Stout, which is uh, brewed with... Ryan Brothers coffee beans. I've never heard of Ryan Brothers. You have now. They must be good. You'll look them up when I first saw that on a TV show here recently. Apparently, they're fairly well known in the coffee industry. Oops. All right. Well, there you go. This is such a good thing to have an actual beer expert yes. on our show. In fact, we kicked Weldon off. He's on a, he's, we sent him up to uh, somewhere in the Sierras to find hops for us. So he's not here. And Jeff is going to be filling in. Cheers. Okay. Yeah, I got to have, have it, a glass of it at the Beer Fest in Healdsburg, I don't know, a month or so ago. Good session beer. Good summer drink. Um, it's a bit on the citrus side for me personally, but I would say that for anybody who's looking for something that's not a big IPA, something to good have on a hot day, definitely the right type of beer. That sounds about right. Mm -hmm. How does the nose come across to you guys? Not a lot. It's almost... Um, like a can of peaches, but without the peaches, <laughs> like an old can of peaches. It has um, um, a little bit of that metallic, tiny bit. Yeah. A can of peaches, but without the peaches. When you're done with the like peaches, the you like you smell oh, the, the can. Okay. Not even just just an empty can of peaches. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm getting that can, that little bit of right, a little bit, yeah. It's like this resiny kind of fruit smell, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. It's I mean, it's great. Though. I mean, it's definitely got like that, or, like. You squeeze some orange in there, but you don't have to. Oh. It's like super orangey. Yeah, you know, you would not need to add any orange. No. Okay. Right. Right. So, so here's our Columbus IPA again, Hangar Twenty Four. Yeah. Whoa, that's an aggressive mm. nose. Yeah. Woo. Jeff, do you know what kind of hops are in this? Um, I'm looking for it right now. I mean, there's definitely Columbus. I'm not sure if it's just an all Columbus. Oh, yep, it is. Hundred percent Columbus hops. Wow. Yeah. Well, I didn't know that was the name of hops, so Columbus Hops. Okay. I've smelled them before, and now I know. What, what kind of nose are you getting? Is it just citrus, or is it kind of like, like a resinous, or almost a pine note? No, I'm getting that. I'm getting kind of all of the above. Yeah, that pine, that floral, not not as piney as uh, the Sierra Nevada ones tend to, you know, that, that Cascadian ones, but... Yeah, absolutely. I, it's got a very, anytime I've been, I've brewed with it, or home, home brewed with it rather, or been around breweries that use the Columbus, it's a very different bitter from a Cascade. Yes, it's like, it, normally the IPAs, I get that bitter aftertaste. Like, you and know, I'm, this one is right up front. Yeah. It's like, hits you like right away. And then it kind of fades away to mm -hmm. nothing. How does it contribute to the flavor when you're sipping it? It's all up front for me. It's like really aggressive as... You're drinking it, and then just nothing at the end. You get, we get a little bit of that malt 
kind of it's like they they balanced it off with a little bit of malt at in. the end. Yeah. Yeah, it looks nice and dark. Really tasty. It is. I mean, it's gorgeous color. Yeah. Yeah, it's one thing I do love. I mean, I I love a good West Coast IPA. You know, Green Flash West Coast IPA is a really good example of it, where it's up front, punches you in the face with hops, and I. I dig it, but I also love something like you're describing here where it's a much more well-balanced, where you've got a lot of malt character in the middle too, finishes off clean and you want to take another sip. You don't have that astringency on the back of the tongue that kind of burns your palate a little bit. Yeah, right. Under the Carl Strauss. Yes, now this is rye. The rye IPA. Beer Ooh. after my own heart. Oh, wow, coffee. I'm getting... Yeah, it smells like bread. I'm getting burnt coffee, but like toasted. That's good. Cool. It's a little tough to say, but there's a there's your rye malt right there. Oh, that's rye malt. That's, that's rye malt. awesome. This is like a stout. This is like a. Yeah. I, I swear, rye has got got to be one of my favorite brewing malts to you, malted grains to use. It's got such a spiciness to it. And this like thick bread characteristic that when you drink it, it just it contributes so much flavor to the middle of the middle of the beer. It does not taste like an IPA. Not at all. I'm not getting that. I'm hardly getting any IPA. The coffee and the and the chocolate and the t- it just it uh, just overpowers any hops over there. I, think. I almost want to chew it. Mm-hmm. It's like that rye bread. Rye is typically, that I've seen, typically used in lower quantities in the grain bill, maybe 10 to 20% of the total grain bill. Um, and there's one brewery up here that makes one that's around 45% of it. And it is just, they actually asked me at the bar, are you sure you know what you're drinking? <laughs> <laughs> it, super spicy. It just like sh- just so seared your palate the moment yeah. you take a sip of it. Wow. I loved it. This is a smooth drink. It is. It really is. Awesome. Yeah. Right on. Carlos Strauss is definitely, for me, one of those breweries that, Personally, and I think just in general, just does not get enough traction marketing-wise. People don't talk about it enough. You don't see it out there enough. And they make some stellar beers. For a long time, I thought Carl Strauss was just um, definitely national, kind of international. And they're not. They're only in California, right? Yeah, it's crazy. They're really limited to, uh, to SoCal in a lot of cases. I mean, we get some of it up here, but I don't see a ton of it anywhere. What's the percent on this, Jeff? Um, let's take a look here. I'm going to guess around 8. Oh, nope, 9.5. Yeah. 9 point. It tastes like yeah, it. Yeah, like, whoa. Um, it doesn't taste as carbonated, especially right after that rye IPA, which is it's really sweet. Um, yeah, I, and I think the last time we had this, we had it with the Kahlua-soaked oak chips. It almost feels like that's missing, and it's... Yeah. I mean, it's clearly not. That This is the usual beer, but it... On to Ballast Point. This is a Sculpin IPA. Woo! Also from San Diego. Yeah, San Diego. <laughs> also known as San Diego. Super fruity. Super florally. Florally, huh? I like that. Yeah. Mangoey, apricotty, floral. Yeah. What do we have in this, Jeff? What's in this one? It clocks in around 7%, uh, right about 70 IBU, too, so pretty hot. Pretty hot. Um, they're not saying which hops they're using, but you guys described it. They're definitely pitching the uh, the apricot, peach, and mango and like lemon type flavors that come off the hops. I think if somebody tries this and they can't take it, it really means IPAs aren't for them because this yeah. is like a friendly way to introduce to an IPA. Yeah, yeah, it's a really good beer. I every time it's been on draft at the local tap, one of the local tap rooms here, it's gone within a day or so. Everyone comes in. Um, you know what? I think I'll just go with Sculpin. Now we're digressing a little bit to stone. Here. The Imperial Russian Stout. Ten and a half percent, dude. Oh, man. Woo, that's sweet. Love that oh, beer. Oh, my gosh. I can already tell. <laughs> this is good. Woo. Yeah. This is Imperial so and much, Russian. So much of yeast in that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Compared to that Sculpin IP, it's actually kind of, it's really sweet up front. Really sweet. This is like... But when you can taste the ten and a half percent, for sure. And it's not. It, I know. Maybe I picked up something new, different than you guys did the last time I had it. But it's not nearly as drying as a lot of the stouts I've had, where you have like the the coffees and things like that, where you just get kind of this weird drying effect on the palate as a result of it. This one does not have that. It goes down really easy. Yeah. Probably a little too easy. 
sweet. Really, it's really sweet. sweet. The hop level in this is actually surprisingly high. I didn't realize it. It sits around 60 IBU. The smoked porter with banana bean. Yes, again by buddy. Oh! Whoa, vanilla! Hello! Lots of, lots of vanilla after the IRS. <laughs> yes. You guys got to tell me. How, I I love the smoke beers. I love that kind of like charcoal band aidy kind of flavor that comes across. How does that pair with the vanilla? I think it's perfect. I think it's it absolutely surprisingly, genius. you know, surprisingly, uh, it pairs well. I mean. We're actually the Stone Brewery when they had this on cask, and they gave us the backstory of it. Where uh, I think they said the marketing director shucks vanilla beans for like three weeks in her office, and then they just pour the whole thing into the fermenter and just go for it. So it's like it's real vanilla, and they actually had some of those vanilla beans in the cask. So as they're pumping it, the vanilla is oh my gosh, by far the best beer I've ever had. That is that is some kind of commitment to a beer right there. Ale Smith, Speedway Stout. Oh, my sweet Jambalaya. 12%. Oh. This wow. must wins that prize right here. That's a big boy. That's uh, that's some aggressive nose. Just lots of... <laughs> oh! <laughs> Yikes! That's, you can, you just, know what you it's can like. smell the alcohol. It's, just, it's like you forgot to clean out your coffee maker. And you know you take it out for guests, and you brew up like a big pot of it, and you put I'm, it away, but you forget to clean out the actual coffee grounds, and you take it out like three months later and smell it. Yeah, it kind of has. That I'm, sort I'm of, just getting alcohol. All I'm getting in the smell is that intense. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. It is really tough to hide twelve percent. <laughs> it really is. Yeah, they really didn't do it. <laughs> yeah. Especially compared to that smoke porter. But, but there's, there's a, a lot, lot of coffee. coffee. You can taste taste that Ryan's coffee. coffee. Very good. What temper? I, I, this is probably getting a little too geeky, but what temperature do you think it's uh, the bottle's sitting at right now, give or take? It's probably too cold. It's probably. I'm not good with numbers. Like 58. I'd say like 200 degrees, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need to warm this up a little bit because yeah. this is. These were all really good beers. Yeah. Every one of them. So the first one we had was the Hangar 24 Orange Wheat. Um, that one was just really sessionable. It was delicious. You could, you know, have a nice 24 ounce glass of that and, and be happy. Definitely a lawnmower beer. Then the Columbus IPA hit you right up front. Mm -hmm. A little malty on the end to ease it off. Yeah, yeah. Fascinating IPA. On the Carl Strauss Boardwalk Black Rye IPA. Um, just, just like. It's like eating bread. How did you describe that, Jeff, with the, the rye? Spicy. I, what, I, I forget what I said, but yeah, super spicy. Like this malty goodness in your mouth. It's fantastic. That needs to be a shirt. Malty goodness in your mouth. <laughs> Love it. My, the my gift to you. <laughs> <laughs> the point, our Sculpin IPA is like an epic beginner's IPA, but um, that almost sounds like it's a knock against it. It wasn't. Yeah. Anybody no, it was that. absolutely delicious. I think oh. all the, fr the fruity characteristics of the, the hops that come across in that beer really will play nicely for anybody wanting to jump into an IPA. Then on our stone, Imperial Russian Stout, the IRS. Oof, that was uh, the sweet. It was actually a little too sweet after that Ballast Point IPA afterwards. Yeah. Um, right up front, it was super sweet, but just I mean, solid. Yeah. Then our stone, Smoked Port of the Vanilla Bean. Hello, old friend. Yes. Man, that thing on cask is unreal. Even in the bottle, like it, it holds up. It's it's really good. It, it's a good balance of the the sweet kind of vanilla y with the the smokedness. And then finally, our Ale Smith Speedway Stout. That's a man's beer. I mean, you gotta have a full chest of hair to just drink that. I don't know. It doesn't it's, even feel like it's. I mean, it feel I, like a, like a lumberjack could just come in at the end of the day, just like a who's that guy? You know. A, the bounty paper no, towel the guy, <laughs> <laughs> or the Monty Paul Python lumberjack guy? Oh, yeah, Paul Bunyan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm not there yet. Yeah. Yeah. Like, definitely a good substitute for a port. If you wanted to okay. substitute any sort of like dessert <laughs> wine, throw that in there. I think you'd be set. Now it's time for the pick, pick of, the of the week. week. So, so what is it, dude? dude tough Hard. call. Mm -hmm. um, some fantastic beers, and I think we really had some of the best. The best. In California, in Southern California, but I'm gonna have to go with 
ballast point. Ah, good choice. The Sculpin IPA. Nice choice. All right. It's just, uh, we'll Put it that. in the, in the uh, pick in of the week box. Pick of the week box. So here you have it. Pick of the week, ballast point Sculpin IPA. So, Jeff, what have you been drinking this whole time? Uh, I decided to stick with the your SoCal theme for tonight. Why not? So I went with a little Lost Abbey Saints Devotion. Nice. Ah, nice. Fantastic. Nice, uh, nice Britannomyces beer. Um, I love their Devotion anyway. It's a fantastic beer. But pitch in the Brett, and you get this cool funkiness to it. It's not sour, but you get this like floral, fruity addition from the yeast. Ah, it's amazing. I'm doing the uh, the easiest session beer, the Hangar 24. Nice. And then I have our uh, smoked port with vanilla bean. Nice. So I am a... Uh, oh, sorry, you go first. I'm Bobby K. I'm Professor Bill, and... I'm Jeff. Saying... Now, now that's, that's a beer. beer.